Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 guide. In this one, I'm going to show you how to recruit four companions or allies introduced with the Wastelanders DLC. Let's do this! Before I show you where to go and how to recruit each ally, let me share a few useful facts about the new companions. So there are at least four of them, two minor and two major so far, and they are spread across four different regions in the map. There's three males and one female. Now all companions provide a free camp defense service and can offer you daily quests too. They also have their own personal camp items. So for the minor ones, we have the Settlers for Adger and the Raiders Punk, who are fairly easy to recruit and do not offer any personal quests. Then for the major allies, we have Commander Dagege and Beckett, who have recruitment quests, a personal quest line featuring over a dozen of missions, as well as a long background story and lots of conversations and special dialogue options. As such, and for the sake of this guide, I am going to skip most of the dialogues. I had almost 40 minutes before starting to cut them down, just to give you guys an idea. Plus, I don't want to spoil the stories of each ally too much. I know you guys dislike spoilers, most of you anyway. Now, these are all the essentials you should know about allies, so now let me show you where to find them and how to recruit them one by one. At the foundation, you can find the settler Forager, an author with a bright past who is now seeking a peaceful life to write as much as he wants while keeping his great sense of humor. Enough introductions for now, so head to the foundation, go straight across the town until you reach the elevator located inside the Spruce Knob Tower. You need to go to the Founder's Hall, the underground cave, and you will easily find him near the waterfall on the left side from the elevator. Note that he walks around in the area, but his movement radius is quite small, so you should spot him very easily around this area. Now, to recruit him, all you have to do is listen to what he has to say and then decide if he can stay with you at your camp or not. Meanwhile, you have some special dialogue options, even your faction reputation has a dialogue line with this companion. That's basically all you have to do in order to recruit him or leave him at the foundation. Now, when the conversation is over, he will remain there while you're at the Foundation's Hall, if you allowed him to move in. Don't worry, that's normal. Just return to your camp, access the build mode, and build his personal item, the Forager's Cheer. Otherwise, he won't spawn at your camp and you won't really see him again. Once you do this, he will take some seconds to appear around the chair normally, and then you are free to talk to him or even take his daily quest. That's it for this minor ally. I must confess, he has some pretty good jokes. Also, he really, really loves chairs. Trust me on this one. I was hoping for a pension, but all I got is tension. <laughs> Another minor companion can be found at the crater, and this one is really looking forward to find a new place to stay. Now, you need to get inside the crater's core first, the way there is very straightforward, as you can see in the gameplay footage. Just go forward past the bridge, then go through the first door you see on your right. Once inside, take the stairs down in the middle of the room, then if you turn left, you will see a guy standing there. That's Raider Punk, a potential ally who can easily be recruited as well. He doesn't really move, so you can always find him here. I don't want to spoil the story too much, but he is basically dying to leave the crater and the raiders to broadcast to the world. Just like the previous ally, you have plenty of special dialogue options, including one for being level 50 or higher. 
What's curious about this one is that you can ask him to pay rent, but he can't really afford it. So it's up to you to decide to take him in or not. He will try to convince you to take him in no matter what, like providing details on valuable items, missing people, and so on. Anyhow, don't forget to build his personal item at your camp, the Raiders Punk Radio, if you want him to show up at your base at all. I have tried to start a daily quest with him, but nothing worked so far in the past 20 hours or so. There might be a shared ally daily quest cooldown, or it's just bugged. I'm not sure which one it is. I still need to test it out though. Now, it may be too early to talk about companion behaviors, but while the forager is usually sitting on my chairs or sofas, the punk loves to ride my little spaceship toy and that's really awesome. I don't think it's a coincidence. Have you guys seen anything like this in terms of companion behavior? Alright, now let's go over the major companions starting with Commander Daguerre. For major companions you receive a quest to recruit them first and it's really not as easy to get them on board compared to the minor allies. You can start her quest by visiting certain regions of the map, in this case the Mire and or the Savage Divide regions seem to trigger it. I was questing in the forest and this quest never triggered, but as soon as I visit the foundation in the Savage Divide, I received her signal and the quest started. The first location you need to go is at the abandoned bunker near Vault 94. Just go straight down once you are there and then head right. You will find the potential ally injured in the floor of the generator room. What you need to do next is totally up to you. You can help her feel better and then ask her a little bit about her story or just go on and proceed with the quest straight away. And note that at this point you won't really get special dialogue options. Anyway, you probably know by now from the signal message that she is an astronaut who literally fell off the sky and doesn't know what's going on at all. Eventually, she will ask you to check her crash site to retrieve the flight record data and look for any survivors. The next quest location is not too far off, the closest spawn is at the Gulper's Lagoon. You will have to do some running until you get there though. When you reach your destination, make sure to extract the flight record data, which will take about 2 minutes to complete. During this time, waves of super mutants will spawn, including suicidal ones. So watch out, defend yourself, and wait until the process is complete. You will have to manually extract the flight data later on once it's done. Then it's time to return to Daguerre at the abandoned bunker. Once you deliver the flight data, she will request something else. Yes, there's still more to do. This time it's an encrypted key from a robot that can be found nearby the crash site. You can request an emergency password from the commander to get the key without having to destroy the robot, but there's plenty of choices for this part. Back to the Gulper's Lagoon and it's time to search the swamp. It shouldn't take too long to find the robot, then return to the guerre again, and that's when she will complain the console in the bunker is too weak to decrypt the key. Which means the information inside the key will stay locked for the time being. Anyway, she wants to build a new console on the surface, and that's when you will get the option to invite her to build it at your camp and stay there for a while. To complete the recruitment quest, go back to your camp, build her console under the allies tab, and she should spawn shortly, just like any other minor companion. Her personal questline will then automatically start and the previous quest will also complete. The rest is up to you. Get to know her more, move on to the next quest or observe her behavior in the camp. They all seem to behave differently so far, that's for sure, so maybe you will find something different about this female character. Note that as a major companion, you can befriend or even romance Daguerre as your relationship with her progresses. She has over one dozen of missions in her questline as well, just to let you know. 
Now, let me show you how to recruit Beckett, the second major companion in game right now. I received his questline when I approached the Rollins labor camp while exploring Blood Eagle settlements. So, I do believe you must come close to this camp in order to get the quest to pop up, or at least be in the Ash Eep region. Anyway, I suggest you to clear the camp before proceeding, since they will chase you around. Once the eagles are out of the way, head to the prison's entrance, where you can meet Beckett behind bars. He will ask you to get him out, and you can ask him a bunch of stuff before you decide to help him or turn him away. There's even a perception option here. If you agree to get him out, you will have to retrieve the prison's key from a nearby container. Go back outside and on the platform on the left, you can find what you are looking for. Go all the way up until you find this huge green chest called Steamer's Trunk. Pick up the jail cell key and get ready for another fight. The Blood Eagles will spawn once again when you pick up the key. It's best to kill them, in my opinion, before returning to Beckett, since they can follow you around any side as well and disrupt your dialogue, but it's totally up to you on what to do here. When you open the prison's door and talk to Beckett, he will thank you and ask you one more favor, to retrieve his belongings, which were taken away by the Blood Eagles. If you agree to help once again, he will then ask you about a meeting location, which can be at your camp. If you invite him over, you will be able to meet him there and complete the quest once you pick up his stuff. The next stop is at the Sludge Works, a nearby Blood Eagle camp. You need to look for his backpack to be more specific. This location is southwest of the Rolling Labor Camp, and there's at least a dozen of enemies inside, including a Power Armor Eagle. I decided to clean the camp first, but you can simply rush in if you wish. I will show you the exact path so you can easily see where to find the green backpack. It's on top of a table. You need to go all the way past the containers and the barrels until you find this rusty metal shack. The backpack is right there. Difficult to miss, really. Now get back to your camp and build Beckett's bar under the Allies tab. Just like it happened with Aguerre, once you build his personal item, the quest will autocomplete and his personal questline will begin. Enjoy your new companion! Beckett is also a potential romance ally with over a dozen of personal quests to complete. I must confess the story is quite intriguing too. Bethesda has done some amazing job here so far with the allies part at least. These are the four companions you can easily get right now with the fixed location, but there are more. Yes, you heard me right. I just discovered that there's a fifth ally, which comes from a very rare random encounter. I wasn't able to find her yet, that's why I didn't include her in this video, but this is proof that there are more NPCs out there who can be recruited as allies. Great news, isn't it? I have also found the settler a forager in a random encounter spawn, which means allies can be found in other locations too. That's a very curious fact, actually. Anyway, that's going to be everything for this video. I am really enjoying to play the new content and rediscovering the world of Appalachia once again. I'm going to be releasing a new guide every day, so stay tuned for more content like this. My Easter event is still live on Discord. Feel free to join and participate. There are awesome prizes that can be yours. I am Marta Branco, thank you so much for watching, leave a like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed the guide and consider supporting me even further by becoming a member or unlocking one of my patron tiers. Well, I will see you all very very soon in the next video. Until then, take care, adios, bye bye!